Hello, everyone. Good evening. Actually, I should say good morning. This is early morning. Um, it's still dark outside, but it's still it's early morning, and we um, are entering into Thursday, and it is September 10th, okay, uh, 2021. We're in the throes of the pandemic, and um, the nugget that I want to give you today, first of all, is to tell you that we are no longer on Blog Talk Radio, um, and we are now going to be on the, Spre the Spreaker platform, and we're going to be able to um, broadcast on Apple and anywhere that we can plant this broadcast. Uh, we purchase some airspace as professionals. And we are also going to be on iHeartRadio, which is really awesome. Um, God is doing a new thing. And uh, it's really, really wild, you know. And being in the throes of the pandemic has caused us to think um, about, you know, the development of why we are where we are. And just one day away from September 11th, I might do a special sideshow for that, for that as well. But I want to bring what we were able to do before, because um, we haven't done any broadcast for a couple of years uh, on Blog Talk Radio. I think the last time, thing that we did was the Divine Mercy, praying for the world. But that's so apropos for what's going on right now. You know, we're constantly um, keeping the um, a, a whole world in prayer until the, the day that Jesus returns, because we need it. This is so much upheaval. Um, right, right now we're in the middle of um, a spiritual famine and a pandemic at the same time. Uh, and the leaders of nations and, you know, especially our nation, it's we're be probably in a better place than we are now because we, we have a, a new president, President um, Biden, who really has a heart for the people. And I know he's a praying man, even though... There's a lot of criticism out there. But we had just gone through a hair-raising experience with the previous administration where everybody um, uh, had idolized a man uh, instead of God and, and somehow putting godly a godly aura around this man who is this mere man with a lot of character flaws. And because of that, as a result, uh, there's a uprising that's like was likened to a, a coup, but I don't really want to get into um, the politics of um, you know of where man is spiritually. These are just all the flaws that happen as a result of the temperament of the individual who who uh, because of his their own desire to you know want to exert power over people because of their lust for power um, and nothing else. Uh, this is why we're at where we're at. Like, like the late John Paul Jackson said from Streams Ministry, um, the nation the nation is at, uh, if the spiritual water table of a nation is at an all-time spiritual low, we are going to choose. Just a nation it's in itself, collectively, is going to choose um, a leader with that same degree of spiritual formation low right and so we have to understand that and if we don't watch ourselves if we don't check ourselves in the Holy Ghost um, then we are going to fall um, into error when we uh, in our own weakness um, select a leader that is not appropriate for the time but see God works out all things together for those who love him Jesus, and uh, and that's a good thing. I mean, the good thing about it is that we are not, we haven't destroyed ourselves. We haven't blown ourselves from up from within, but we've done it um, psychological levels, intellectual levels, spiritual, and and also physical. When you see the shootings and and, and, and different things like that, um, uh, airing from time to time on CNN, and thank God for uh, the, the people like the Cuomo's, Chris 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 Cuomo. And his brother, you know, who um, obviously had to resign because, just because of the of the media mess that's out there, always trying to um, delineate and downgrade people with a message um, of hope, especially in this pandemic. So I just want to just say that 
uh, we dusted off uh, um, what you're going to listen to on the, on the Spreaker platform and iHeartRadio and Apple and wherever these podcasts go, are going. Uh, you're going to listen to, um, I've been doing a lot on transition for the last, I don't know, the last six years. Um, it would be popping up from, from every now and then because we are people in transition. That's what life is all about, transitions and growth and transformation. Hopefully transition lead into transformation. And and so what happens is that um, I'm, I'm going back. I, I had to salvage my um some you know my broadcast at a within the last within a seven year time span, and in the prophetic, there's when the Lord steps into time and gives uh, you know a week week and a nod nod to many of His people who are prophetic. Usually, um, if it's an authentic prophetic word, um, even though we prophesy in part because we're in our human skin, what happens is that. Uh, the prophecy, a prophecy is tested regarding the timing of it and the and the season in which it has to be released. And so, uh, this prophetic word that you're about ready to hear, and it's you know, it's teachings, it's inclinations. Um, I have two guests, um, a former, or not former friend, they're both friends, but a friend, uh, a former roommate of ours, um, uh, Tim O'Leary, who has Kingdom One Ministries. And uh, um, my friend, uh, my female friend, uh, Bridge uh, Carroll from Ireland. And uh, these, you know, God's been blessing us with friends for like 20 years, 30 years. And it, we, we may not necessarily be communicating for um, like 10 of those years and, and, and resume our friendship as if those 10 years, um, you know, hadn't gone by. So that's the beauty of the kinds, kinds of friends that the Lord has blessed us with. So from time to time, we'll, we will come, get together and probably cast in and prayer uh, and, you know, and just talk about the journey thus far and what God is doing in, in our families and in other people's families and, and just in the, in the worldwide um, God, family of God um, in the diaspora, both in the Jew, Jewish a diaspora and a Christ. Did you know there's a Christian diaspora as well? Um, it's called ministry all over the world. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, and so we're gonna you're gonna hear some similar things. This is 2016, folks, folks. And when the other administration was coming in, we were seeing these things what was going to unfold. But we 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 had to be faithful as to not to be very specific about the specific things that God has shown us because if you do prophesy out of you know in um out of sorts um, and out of season we we prophesy in season and out of season but out of season um it could really be a um, negative you know it can play be a negative impact on the outcome of things so um you know we let the hand of God guide us um, you know speak among ourselves pray about it and, and, and see what God's, God does, okay? Um, and the Lord has done a lot of things um, since 2016, and we've seen things morph. I know at the beginning of a certain term, of certain leader's presidency, I had strong inclinations that it was not going to go well towards the end of his presidency with specific things that I don't want to get into in case... We know many people hear these broadcasts, but um, I saw something like an insurrection. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was so shocked. I didn't even, this is at the beginning of 2016. I didn't even want to vote. Matter of fact, I didn't vote. Um, I did not vote. Yeah, I, 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 wait a minute. Did I, yeah, I didn't vote, but other people did because the Lord was showing me I really needed to be in a state of prayer and vote from the position of offering prayer for the next up and coming administration, even if I didn't get a, a full knowledge of who it might be. And I, to be honest with you, I, I knew who it was going to be. And I was just, just, just so distraught about the whole thing. 
but I did see a lot of death. I did see a lot of destruction. I did see a lot of hate going down. And it just, you know, I was, it just, the Lord put a band-aid over my mouth. And that's one of the reasons why you didn't hear Dr. Shirley um, doing um, podcasts because it was more or less, uh, I, first of all, I was in medical school and I'm an acupuncturist now and about ready to take my last board so I can start treating the long haulers. Didn't even know when I went into school 2013 that I had an idea that there was going to be a pandemic, but I didn't know what it was going to be about and what it, you know, and how long it was going to persist. So um, we seem to um, be surviving this, but not a, a lot of people have gone home to be with the Lord. And I, I, I have a, a very short, um, short word of, of encouragement before we go into this 2016 piece um, to, so you can as, understand the development of this and why things are the way they are now. Um, I um, had uh, a couple of days ago, um, I had an experience, an unusual, an unusual experience where I are actually for the last couple of weeks have been into the throes of worship. We just, um, one of my friends on Facebook um, discovered the Smule app and was using it as a way to um, mourn, uh, you know, and, and, and sing a song that, you know, her loved one, I think it not, wasn't a significant other, but it could have been a sibling had passed away. And, um, and uh, they obviously were close and she used that to, uh, I think it was called Tears in Heaven, No More Tears in Heaven. Um, and she was using that, you know, to help her grieving heart. And uh, I saw what other people were doing with the Smule app and it was more like a karaoke app with a lot more to it because you can, you know, take dust off some old songs and the app, you know, is geared towards your voice and they even evaluate your voice to see if, you know, where you need to improve. And um, you can develop your voice use it to you know um hone in some musical skills there and and so i i just rediscovered my ver the, my the gift of worship that the lord had given me uh and some of the songs that i sang while i was in a worship um, group um year, uh, years prior to me marrying my husband and probably in a couple of years into our marriage um they were there so the lord was showing me he wanted me to use that as a prayer shawl, um, prayer covering for the people that are grieving, that are really sad and, and, and traumatized by the um, latest, uh, in, in, you know, with the pandemic and the loss, so much loss of, of life, uh, you know, people that are close, people that we, we didn't, wouldn't even think would, would go before us. But there's, there were a lot of good people who departed. But the Lord is saying he's, saying he's coming back with them. But, but um, there's going to be a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. And the way that ha this, this uh, revelation happened was through a dream a couple of days ago. Um, I fell asleep. Lots of times when I'm awakening up, I'm, I have a vision, dream or vision. Or maybe in the daytime, I might get a little sleepy. I think I'm taking a nap and then a dream and vision will come upon me. Um, and a vision within the dream. And it would only last like 10 minutes, but it would feel like a, a long time. So a couple of days ago, just as right after the series of tropical rains that we had, uh, specifically um, Tropical Storm, storm on Ray, um, we, uh, you know, I was taken to, um, I was just walking in the, in the cool of the day um, in the neighborhood that was similar to where I physically was living in the natural but it looked a little different in the supernatural. And I was guided to these woods that I never, ever walked through. And I was greeted by these tall, tall figures that looked like human, but they were extremely tall. So I knew in my spirit that they were angels. And um, as I was waiting, you know, to talk to them, um, I, I understood. I never even got a chance to open my mouth, but I understood just through my mind that they were there to do a good, a, a very powerful work on the earth. 
um, and I they spotted me and um, then I noticed the sky was getting a little dark but it, it, it started out sunny but then it was getting a little dark and I thought I think I might go need to go into the house because you know with this it might be some tornado or something you know foreboding that's coming upon us and those angels were just wanting to be there to comfort me and as I was turning around with one of them said to me so where are you going you don't you need your keys for the next thing that you're going to do and I'm like I already got my keys and then I was like and they said well we have some keys for you and I'm like oh, how'd you get my keys I thought I had them these are different keys these are keys for the next season that you're about ready to go through to you're going to need that and I have our head already tapped into that through revisiting the place that worship has and and um uh, and bringing the glory to the to the earth um and uh, and and strengthening people where they were at in the body of christ and 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 outside of the body of christ and so as i was walking you know how you start walking and then you're, you're slowing down you're in slow-mo and i'm like, mm. <laughs> like i gotta get going before this window it takes me but it was it was a fear that was coming over me. By the way, I should, you know the the angels were there to 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 assure me not to, to not to fear. So what happened was, as I'm you know you know trying to walk and uh, you know and, and it's doing the slow mo thing, um, I, the one of the hands of the angels just pushed me forward and with wind. It was like like I was riding the wind. I was riding the wind. And so as I was going back to my house and um, and, it's, and the trees were parting, the, the wind blew over the trees, a, a path for me to my house. And the, every time I thought it was getting close to the house, it seemed like the house was kind of pushing further and further. But then the wind sped up, you know, like it was a rapid wind. So uh, what happened was as uh, soon as I tried to put the key in the house, it was like I heard the phone ring. My cell phone was ringing. It was from American Express, and so I'm I'm coming too. I'm coming from the world of the supernatural into the back into the world of the natural, and there was a message, a message for me, and the message was um, that uh, you know the American Express wanted me to pay the bill, but I was getting another message from the Lord that that the wind that um, these angels. Um, are releasing is a wind called American Express. It's going to go to all the families of the earth. It's going to go to all the families of the earth. This American Express wind, okay, it's going to there's going to be a fast suddenly, and the internal wind would be it would be experienced as internal. The eternal wind would be experienced as internal to some people. They will actually feel it going through through the whole entire body uh, or it will come through uh, various weather patterns um, and it will be blowing until 2022 and people will not be the same. Uh, God's going to give um, in this wind various strategies um, for people to bring the kingdom to, uh, for, his, for his people to bring the kingdom of God and those destined to be his people to bring the kingdom of God to the earth in a way that they have not. Uh, and the focus is going to be clear. The, the directors are going to be clear for many families. Many families are going to be re, 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 redefining who they are, what, what their narrative is, what their mission and vision is collectively. And many families are going to be healed once they know what they have from the Lord and what is expected of them from the Lord. It's going to be very, very powerful encounters. And people are going to be, it's going to be the talk of social media and um, it's going to be awesome and it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be holy, a holy work. It's going to be expansive. Um, I've been, we've been seeing a lot of uh, bunny rabbits lately where we live and, you know, bunny rabbits multiply fast and rapid. It's going to be multiplication of gifts. So whatever God shows up me in the natural He'll confirm it in the spirit, and then he'll confirm it with other people. But he'll use dreams to confirm it as well. And um, you know, we've in since we've been praising and worshiping the Lord and entering into, you know, even you know, communion daily on a daily basis, um, along with praise and worship. 
God's been moving big time in our family even. So we uh, evidently have received the first fruit of this next season that we, we, we we're coming into. So um, I just want to just say before we, you know, get into the rest of the segment for 2016, talking about the place of intention, um, uh, you know, with regarding transition. So this is going to be, so what I just described here prophetically um, is a transition from, um, is, is a transition coming from heaven. So this man's transition where we stop and Jesus begins. And I speak more about that in the, in the, in the, um, the succeeding broadcast that we, was broadcasted previously on Blog Talk Radio. So without further ado, I'm just going to ask the Lord to just bless the listening audience um, and that, Lord, you would remove the cobwebs from um, everyone's ears who, you know, and that they would desire to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, what the Holy Spirit is showing us through our seeing gift as well, and that their eyes, spiritual eyes and ears would be open in the name of Jesus to receive what the Lord has. To also not to, not to just receive, but to become a ve- better evaluator of the signs of the times, and also uh, a better uh, you know a, a, a clearer vessel, uh, so that the Holy Spirit can fill them. And the best way to do that is through the reading and washing of the Word. Okay, as well as the um, Pray, praise and being a clear vessel for praise and worship, you know, to, to come to closer to the heart of the Lord. So enjoy the show, okay? And be blessed. Love you. Love Talk Radio. Seek the Lord, and you will find Him. This is Seek Christian Internet Radio Outreach, WSCIRO, Boston, Massachusetts. I am making my way on a journey through the valleys and hills of my heart to the kingdom of freedom. Where from my God I will never depart And I'll sing la 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 My King, my Lord and my life La 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 I'll seek you from morning to night Good day. Welcome to our show, Faith Talks Live Prayer on Blog Talk Radio. This is Dr. Shirley Caniff, General Manager of WSCIRO, Seek Christian Internet Radio of Greater Boston, okay, and also General Manager of WSTKI TV, where you can uh, actually see our videos and we're going to start recording more of them uh, on uh, Vimeo and YouTube and Spreaker platforms as well as Facebook. I just want to say hello and a big God bless you to my Facebook family um, and friends. Uh, It's been a while since I've been doing the radio venue, uh, but you know, we're in 2016 now and we're into March and and it's Lent, and we're we're going to continue on our theme of um, transition because you know life is full of transitions. But the difference is is when you're a Christian, when you're a believer, when you have that relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, the world obviously sometimes gets turned upside down in a good way because you stop. And then he begins, right? He begins his work in you. Jesus begins his work in you. And it doesn't get completed until um, until you're called home or until, um, you know, Jesus comes um, to claim his church for the second time, the second coming. Um, and it's it's, gonna, it's glorious. It's, it's a glorious concept in reality and absolute truth. And, you know, I'm on board. Well, how about you? Okay? So... 
what we're going to do um, is uh, I wanted to give people a year. It seems like it's been a good year since the last time we did a radio show. A year to just chew on Transition 2015 because there was many nuggets, you know, and, and many dreams. And since then, if the Lord didn't start ministering to me. He just, you know, gave me teachings here and there and then just put it on hold and, and like, fine wine. It aged and matured in time and, and, you know, and significant things are happening now. There's transitions all over the place in a political arena, in media, in our individual lives. And it, it, it's just... And it's just amazing how that word, um, apply, the way that it was spoken and the way that it, I, I caught it from heaven and the way that the Lord had me teach it, um, it, it, it just seemed that it was a forerunner to what a lot of people have been experiencing now. And I'm telling you, you know, I don't, I, I don't like to talk politics and I'm not going to. I'm, I'm just going to just say <laughs> it, election 2016 is... Our hair raising roller coaster experience full of transitions and surprises and uh and you know as Christians, we need to understand the character of God in this and what God is doing um there's no perfect person but i do i i must say i must say it's very advantageous all right for people to vote for the candidate that has the qualities of Jesus, who will not make in front of people, put them down in public, um, who will not gossip, who who will not, you know, um, who will uphold um, life um, the best way that they can and um, help a whole lot of people get there to build people's lives and not to break them, not not to use money as a god. Um, and worship the God of Mammon, which is the material material possessions and materialism. Okay, so I just want to just leave that with you, you know, because this is what um, the ministry of Jesus is all about. This is why He sent us the Holy Spirit to form community, a community that loves people, that shares um, things in common with people, and to make sure that nobody's left out. Okay, um, and at the same time to encourage you know people to put their hand to the plow. But in the Holy Ghost, okay, and and from there um, proceeds prosperity, uh, not only of a physical, um, economical nature, but of a spiritual nature, which comes first, first and foremost. And that was what, you know, so, so, you know, when we put our intentions before the Lord in these transitions, okay, we're we're going to start seeing a whole lot of things um, happening. And so we talked about transition. In all its forms, it seems, but it, it, the buck doesn't stop here, folks. You know, we we got to go now into um, inten- uh, transitioning with intention. Okay, so before we do that, let's unpack what the definition of intention is according to Webster's Dictionary. All right, intention is the thing that you plan to do or achieve, an aim or a purpose. The second definition. For intention is it's a determination to act in a certain way, a resolve um, to import a significance, to to even attach value to um, what one intends to do or bring about. In another um, definition um, for intention regarding the church, um, the object for which a prayer, mass, or pious act is offered or, or deed. Okay. Um, and also at the process or manner of healing of incised wounds, as in the medical intention of a physician or a practitioner. Okay, so um, and uh, it's amazing how intention can be misused or or uh, or, or, or used. And just think about this line: intention on a continuum, uh, with good intentions on the positive side. And negative intentions on the, the the bad side. So, even though intention is intended to be a good thing, there are there is a continuum where you know people can misuse intention, like in manipulations and you know and you know trying in, in groups of people trying to um, maintain some kind of power by sending out negative intentions that are intended to deceive others. Okay. And the, the you know the many. I mean, you see a lot of this in the media, especially regarding 
uh, election 2016. So um, it, it's it's and then sometimes intentions, negative intentions, are like a chameleon uh, that you're wondering why didn't they say that before? What's intended? Why why are they why are they what are they intended when they say that when they do that when they say one thing one time and then another thing and another time and half of the stuff is not even true and and it's all done to bring down people enough to, a lot to think about you know um before we go into the scriptures um we're going to, we're going to look more at a definition of intention how about the purpose with respect to marriage you know uh you know what what is your intention to your spouse and uh i mean I'm talking more like the heterosexual you know, legitimate union between men a man and a woman um that's what you exchange when you exchange vows okay okay so uh well uh today is going to be all about you know, like I said, the prophetic word 2016, and you know, talking more about intentions and and in during transitions. Uh, if you don't know what the intention is, you're not going to get to the purpose of your life. So it's in, in this, you're going to ask the Lord. You know, Lord, what do, are you doing in my life? Show me and see. And God has intentions from heaven, divine intentions uh, that get pulled down through through prayer. Okay. Um, it says in you know, let's see in Philippians, Philippians four six in the New Testament. Do not be anxious, especially in these transitions. That I'm throwing that in about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, or your intentions. Okay, it's and it's amazing um, how. It's significant intention is. It's so significant that the Lord gives us a way to petition Him, uh, you know, f- you know, for His intended intended act or action for our life. All right, which is much be- much better than us, uh, you know, much better than ours, um, and, and things like that. Um, so there's more about um, intention. Um, in the scriptures, I'm, there's many scriptures here, but what I want to do is is just call attention attention to Ephesians one nine. He made known to us the mysteries of His will according to His kind intention which He purposed in Him, which is in Jesus. So the Lord He makes known His mysteries, the mystery of His will. Uh, according to his kind intention, which is Jesus, his only begotten Son, for you know he's 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 he, who died for our sins, and who washed mankind free from the uh, the guilt of original sin. That was uh, God's intention for us through the life of His only begotten Son, and uh, and it's just so amazing. So the rest of the show. We're going to have two guests. One is um, Timothy O'Leary, whom if you have heard in our um, IDs, he's done our station IDs, and he's been on our show a couple of times. And he has a ministry called Kingdom One um, that the Lord has given him through a vision and has been confirmed many, many times through um uh, people, you know, through prophets with a, who have an apostolic call and to release people in ministry. And then we have my friend Breach, who about five years ago, we did a whole series on um, the return of the prodigals and uh, and talked about the orphan spirit and, uh, and uh, in relation to the older son and the prodigal and the father's um, heart uh, regarding this. And I'm going to post that uh, those links uh, in this these new episodes that we're doing, so that you can go back to them and 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 kind of and take notes and learn from how much the Father loves you in this and what He's doing in this day and age, um, in in the young in all of our lives, but specifically the the young group, the young population, the young generation. Uh, so we're going to have her talk about. 
what God's doing in her life and the ministry God's called her to, uh, called Treasures in the Darkness. And there is an event coming up um, March 16th, and we'll talk more about that. And also Paul David Guidry, um, um, who is pastor of the Metro Westbridge Church in Native Massachusetts, um, is going to have um, for the you know during the month month of March, um, um, very spirit filled leaders who um, have um, you know a very uh, loving, personal, intimate relationship with the Lord, and who you know mm-hmm. just want to love on on God's people with you know the the revelations that God has given them for mankind and. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Um, amongst them will be Mahesh Shavda and um, uh, Matt Sorg and his wife Stephanie, and many other people. And I'll, I'll post that link also in this uh, write up, um, uh, in the promo on our um, this new show that we're doing. And of course, the name of this show is uh, Transition 2016, Prophetic Word 2016. Uh, Transition and attention. So, uh, this is, I'm glad to have you. And let's just ask the Holy Spirit to come uh, with His power and glory. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts of Thy faithful and kindle within us the fire of divine love. Send forth your Holy Spirit, and we shall be recreated, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O oh God, who did instruct the hearts of thy faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the gifts of the same Spirit we may be truly wise and forever rejoice in His consolation. We pray this to Christ. Our Lord, Amen. So let's uh, hear uh, from Joanne McFadder. Come, Holy Spirit. God bless you.
Okay, uh, wasn't uh, Joanne McFadda uh, very, very spirit-filled? Uh, I know she did this album years ago, but it's just it's it's it is it it's as if it's a fresh download from heaven each time I listen to her. Just call the Holy Spirit down. So we just thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're going to do in the hearts of your people, your beloved people, your beloved bride, the body of Christ. In 2016, amen. So, um, my prophetic words that the Lord has had downloaded into my spirit um, started from August uh, 28th, uh, where He gave us a new show. Um, the ordin- it's called Ordin- Ordinary Folks, and we did a Model T version of that, um, which you can pick it up um, on YouTube and Vimeo um, at uh, the Shrine of the Martyrs, the National Shrine of the Martyrs, and Kateri. Tequitha, um, uh, um, the first American Indian Christian martyr um, on this net side of the of of uh, heaven and in this side of the hemisphere, uh, and uh, from the 1600s. Could you imagine? Could you imagine a Indian squaw from the 1600s having a Holy Spirit encounter and not knowing what to do with it, but made such an impact that uh, the church. To the uh, to the um, Jesuits who preserved this history, the Church canonized her as a saint uh, recently, say 2012. So we we did. We, we, it was really nice to do her um, to do her life uh, where where she uh, walked, and um, and it's great. All right, so. A question for everyone. Do you really know who you are in Christ Jesus? I posted this on Facebook, but I thought it was wonderful to just talk about how the Lord started getting a hold of my heart in this area. Uh, just because of some of the some personal experiences that I had that, you know, the Lord, you know, used this uh, uh, question and posed this question in my spirit, which I know it resonates in the heart of mankind. Do you really know who you are in Christ Jesus? You know, I, I've been doing some personal Bible study, uh, like I said earlier, and um, uh, in the latter part of uh, August, just pouring my heart out to Him and and just trying to understand why people treat uh, each other the way that they treat each other in the body of Christ. And Breach would talk more about that. And uh, and I was led to these scriptures in my time of Bible study: Matthew twelve thirty four, Proverbs four twenty three. Psalm one forty one three and James one twenty six. Matthew Matthew twelve thirty four states, "Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks." And you know, you start wondering why are people saying what they're saying, and why are they hurting people through their words um, and through the power of suggestion, uh, like you've been seeing, especially in the media, um, through the through people who claim to, who claim to be Christians uh, and tearing each other apart, like. In shreds, um, it's it's just sad. And then Proverbs four twenty three: Out of the abundance of your heart flows the issues of life. So, you know, if somebody's speaking their intentions and their intentions are not on solid ground or they're not good, uh, you start to wonder. It's 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 like it's they're exposing their heart, and this is what we have to watch out, folks. You know, what people speak through their mouth exposes who they really are at that moment doesn't matter if you pile prayers on them. They've spoken it. 
You know, you got to give them time to repent of these things, or repent of these things, because they are stumbling blocks between them and the Lord. It's just, it's just as simple as that. Uh, Psalm one forty one three. You set a guard over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. So once we realize that, we we ask the Lord. You know, Lord, especially if you want to follow Him with your all, all of your heart. Lord, set a guard over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. James one twenty six says, "Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, they see themselves and their religion is worthless." And these are the folks that are claiming that they are Christian. So, you know, this is a time of great discernment in this transition. You know, watch out how people state their intentions and what is flying out of their mouth. You learn a lot about them this way. So, in James 3, it talks about how we should tame out tongues or what happens when, when we doubt. Uh, and this is this is still, we're still on this intention vein. This is all about being responsible in our in 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 and in, in Satan and what our intentions are, but we have to know who we are in Christ first. If we don't, then we're going to be haphazard with our intentions, with the words of our mouth. It says, "Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is who is ever at fault in what they say, I mean, who is never at fault in what they say, is perfect." able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds of the ocean and of the current, they are stirred by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is like a rudder. It is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force uh, or how a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being on their own merit can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with the same tongue, we can curse fellow human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth can come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. And I, and I tell you, um, in 2016, the prosperity that the Lord wants to release is going to come forth by a people who can properly state heaven's intention for mankind mark my words that is going to make or break uh, the anointing that God wants to release if you've been walking in God's presence and all of a sudden become, become haphazard in your speech and mis, you know, and misuse the intentions of your heart I guarantee you your the anointing will, will fail to flow in your life the anointing of heaven will, will stop and you'll be, you know, going into a desert before you know it. So, and and, and the desert isn't a, isn't a bad thing. Uh, it's the last place of reproof and correction, okay, and repentance. So, you know, you can't have one without the other. And this is where God's justice comes in. This is where His chastisement comes in. Just because He loves you, okay. Um, I had a dream. Uh, There's a word for, for the Catholic Church, especially in 2016. And so um, I had a dream uh, that the Lord himself was sent, is sending um, the Archangel Gabriel to awaken and open the ears of many believers in the body of Christ, to hear the voice of the Lord, to hear the intentions of heaven. But your heart has to be pure. Your heart has to be right for this. Um, but to hear the voice of uh, of heaven in a greater way in these end times. 
And he's saying that the, because the church has been faithful to the purification uh, through the prayers of the saints, uh, both here on earth and in heaven, in the souls of purgatory, that because the church has been faithful to the purgation that it has been called to for for a certain season, that God is now um, coming in power and glory and is now going to be opening up the ears of um, his people in the church. Okay, we are coming into the greater days of glory of God, and the people of God will shine forth in the radiance of the Father in these days. And I saw this. I, I, I was give, in this scenario was I was in front of this um, this stone church, stone hedge, hedge, hedge church. It looked like a church that you know was um, that you could would see by an English, uh, you know, in like from an English roadside or or even Ireland, you know, the old churches of Ireland. Um, and what happened was I saw this uh, white figure in the background and with a uh, glowy figure with a white gown and curly hair and blue eyes out of, out of this world. And the, the the angel, I realized it was the angel, and I realized it was Gabriel, the angel. It just kept getting bigger and taller than the church and just turned around and just you know, at me, looked at me. And you know, and then looked at the church, and looked at me, and looked at the church, and looked at me, and looked at the church, like it was communicating to some, you know, something to me. He wasn't, he didn't speak to me. He was, it was like a exchange of thoughts, and 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 this, there was this, this, and in the, it was in the glance that I realized that the angel Gabriel is a messenger who's going to be sent to the church. He is sent. He has been sent. He's going to continue to be sent to the church by the Holy Spirit. His, in his ministry is going to become very powerful in 2016. And as people's hearts are purified in this year of mercy, um, he is, you know, the, the spiritual ears and insight are going to, you know, the eyes are going to open and the ears are going to open. And, uh, and the, the buzzword for 2016 is expectancy. E-X-P and it's going to be a greater expectancy for the and hunger for the things of God, but the Lord did also a play. He also did a play on words that um, uh, there is going to be an expectation to see the things of God, a heightened expectation to see the things of God. So expectancy, um, metaphorically, is going to is what had been translated in expect to see, not only expect to see but expect to hear, but expect to see. You see. Um, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, in the sp- in, in 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 faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. And I'm going to add through revelation. So, faith is the, and from Hebrews. The definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's a substance. It's tangible. Substance of things hoped for is the evidence of things not seen. And this is what um, this is the scripture that we stand on. Every time we do faith talks like prayer from Hebrews. So I just love when God does that. So um, April 22nd, 2015, the prophetic word um, that I was receiving, it was it was through a dream. And I believe the Lord wanted to, to show me the condition uh, uh, of the body of Christ and how far this condition um extended into the past and how the past affected the present moment we got in these divisions. Um, and the the whole thing is that, you know, the whole thing, takeaway that I got from this is that true ministry is loving people where they're at and releasing them through prayer into the heart of the Father through the intercession of Jesus Christ, our heavenly bridegroom king, who is forever making intercession for us and who wills all good things for mankind. But sometimes, sometimes we get in the way. Sometimes our humanity, um, you know, stops the hand of God, and it stops the hand of God through um, uh, irresponsible intentions, um, uh, impartiality. Uh, God favors for this group of people, but not for that group of people, and, and just through misjudgment. Okay, so um, I had a dream. And this, you know, confirms what I had a dream about October 19th. Um, I had a dream that the Lord brought me into a similar, you know, it was like a, a seminar, a conference seminar situation. And in the dream, I can hear like uh, this new sound coming from heaven through this 
through this band, um, through this band of worshipers, young worshipers, and it was jazzy, a jazzy tune, okay? Um, and uh, but some of it was good, and then I'm like, and, it, and then I, I, I started feeling this an unsettled, uh, unsettledness in my spirit. I think that's a word. Uh, it was like, it was church as usual, and but in this gathering, many were so self-consumed. They were too self-consumed with the, an image um, that they were upholding for themselves and in, in a, you know, and in public. Many were getting burnt out because of this. Okay, so it started out good, and then it it, it turned sour as a result of this. Many fights and skirmishes were happening in different places in the building, causing divisions. Um, uh, these fights went back to the past and extended to the present. When I'm saying back to the past, I'm talking uh, Revolutionary War period. Um, and uh, and and the Lord was just showing me the, the correlation to way back when, when the first pilgrims came from Great Britain to uh, to the New World to set up shop here uh, because they wanted to worship God in spirit and truth. That was the original intent. Instead of praying through the skirmishes uh, in this particular dream, now we're coming to the present moment, there was difference, uh, different of opinions which trickled into the political environment as well. And I got this uh, back in uh, October 19, 2015, about well, seven months ago, before all this stuff was happening um, in the media regarding the, the debates and everything. It says, uh, so... The overall consensus and the overall uh, mindset, which is starting to trickle into the body of Christ, which I experienced in this dream, was we cannot help them. We are too busy with other things. We're too busy with, you know, you know, and too and too fearful about what we think that ISIS might do to us and and things like that. In this dream vision, the person um, uh, in need got very belligerent. Because things are being taken from them, you know. Then I'm, I'm going to say that it's the little people, the people that uh, are in need, the, the disabled, the you know those who are you know have an issue with addiction, those who have an issue with depression, uh, and uh, and you know those who are in economic straits because of dire straits because of these. It says. Uh, so in this dream, the, you know the person, and the person is metaphorical, which which means a people group um, symbol as a as a symbolic because it was faceless. Uh, they got very religious. They went at, they they went after the one who seemed to have rejected their plea for help, and they cried for mercy. And there was a weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I really believe that was describing what you're seeing in these rallies and these Donald Trump rallies. Okay. Um, and, and and what's been being reported uh, on online, you know, and and it's amazing how it, people are appalled in one point, one one instant, and then they want to support him, his candidacy in another instant. And this is from these are people that are Christian that you would never think in their wildest dreams. At one point they were against this person, and then all of a sudden because he didn't represent true tradition, uh, true Judeo Christian values, but yet. They, they, you know, something happens where their campaign is canceled. Ben Carson was, and then, then, then they go to support this candidate that really doesn't, you know, who has had four wives, who has doesn't have a track, a good track record, record in, you know, treating women uh, with respect, and and uh, and the, even even the little people that you know, the ones without the money, okay. And when somebody says money is king, watch out. Their God is money, and they their God is mammon. Mammon and money are one and the same. Okay. Um, so uh, between the particular nameless leader representing a well-established ministry it or I should say group, and the one who has was in need concerning a particular family member. So you know, if the wrong person gets in, you're going to see more of this. So the fight was so extensive that the one needing the help took a bite out of the leader that refused to help this person and their family and bit the legs off of the one with that uh, that was known to have this big extensive expansive ministry or or um, when I when I say ministry also you know this power base all right it was so gruesome that 
and uh, and I asked the Lord. It was so gruesome that at the end of the dream, dream I asked the Lord why he wanted to show this to me, and then he told me to look again. The leader that was attacked got his legs that got his legs severed from under him, gained his composure, and took the legs back, and we attached it back to his own body because he had the power to do so as the dream advanced. It was plain and clear that this leader was the Catholic Church. So and simultaneously, as you're seeing something being played out, like in the political arena, mark my words that this is something that's happening that's spiritual and you know and it's in and, and it's it's being mainstreamed you're see, you're going to see these different scenarios happen all across the board like also in the church also in families uh and and it's one one thing attack the leadership um uh, structure of that particular group whatever that group is and but um what's going to happen is that when these when these things come under attack, when people groups attack one another's power base, you know, in a way that, you know, we, you know, um, breeds rejection or abandonment, God is going to come in, the Holy Spirit, the ministry of Jesus is going to come in and do something in the spiritual realm, on the spiritual realm, and he's going to do a reconnection back to the values of God because the intentions are uh, of many people because you know because of power greed for power are going to run amok and he's going to restructure the intentions the right way and he's going to bring you know he's going to heal um, the wounded and he's going to bring you know the it back to where it needs to be and 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 this is what's going to be happening in, in this year of mercy, and if the Catholic Church is going to be the leader in this. Okay, um, so it was plain and clear that this leader, uh, you know, that the leadership in the Catholic Church, was church during this time is going to be restored, taking the stance to reconcile all parts of the body back together, and that's what Pope Francis is doing in this year of mercy. That's you know that's the intention behind this year of mercy. Um, People can go to any shrine, any national shrine um, throughout the world uh, and walk through those doors of mercy and go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, and, which is confession, and get a new lease on life and, and receive communion worthily and be transformed and renewed in the mind and in the heart uh, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Who makes all things new, who wills all things to be made new. Okay. For you and for me, so it's it's so during this time, it's as if the church woke up from a slumber and understood its mission once again, and resumed the great commission as set forth in the book of Acts. After the dream, the Lord had directed me to a green legal file on the ground, and He told me to pick it up. They don't lose the file; it's very important. I will need this for the time that is to come in this country. So whatever that is, Lord, I ask that you would just release that, you know, the contents of that file in my spirit. So, Lord, that, you know, that whatever, however you are using this radio station, that we would be able to hear from heaven what heaven is saying for, in a greater way for uh, the, the people of the new millennium um, and also what the Lord is wanting to show us through revelation. And so we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, and so this next dream that I'm sharing with you regarding the prophetic word for 2016 is um, we need to understand anticipation first. It's it's a dream of regarding anticipation. Um, and before we go into that dream, we want to lo- look at the definition of anticipation because there's something about holy anticipation along with along with expected expectant expectancy um holy anticipation to give advance thought a discussion or treatment to to meet an obligation before due date to foresee and deal with with something in advance to forestall to use or to expand in advance of actual possession to act before another um often to check uh, so often so as to check or counter to look forward to as certain expect um so, um, examples of anticipate. The cost turned out to be a high, to be higher than anticipated. The author anticipated 
objections to his theory. The organizers of the fair anticipate a large crowd. I do not anticipate having to pay for your ticket. He eagerly anticipated her arrival. Um, the Latin word anticipatus means is, is a past participle of, of anticipare, uh, uh, to um, to take to uh, more at a heave. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, synonyms related to anticipate, to expect, wait, hope for, watch for. Related words to bank on, to count on, to count upon, to depend, to rely on, to wait, to envision, uh, to envisage. E n v i s a g e, envision, foresee, foretell, predict, prophesy, uh, assume, presume, presuppose, contemplate, I and view. All right. So these are all the word plays, you know, of of anticipate that the Lord had given me regarding this this um, warning of, you know. Um, putting something down and anticipating and watching and waiting and and then rele- releasing the prophetic word and I have been sitting on this for such a long time and the Lord just used this time to release it. Um, someone was chasing me from behind in this dream. I got fearful as the dream progressed. I was brought into a dark wind tunnel and then I noticed I couldn't run anymore. It seemed that I came to the end of something and I was about ready to cross over but somehow and in some way I was placed on a scaffold, a place of waiting. So somehow it was balancing me and I noticed that whoever was chasing me had to also jump onto the scaffold. I saw what looked like a door with a blind in front of it. It was three feet in front of me and I knew deep down inside if I could swing over to the ledge on the scaffold, then I could open the door and pass on through. But something was impeding me when I looked down. I saw what looked like a door with a blind in front of it. It was three feet in front of me, and I knew deep down inside if I could swing over to the ledge on the scaffold, then I could open the door and pass on through. But something was impeding and uh, encroaching upon me. When I looked down, and I had it in my heart to just try to get out of harm's way, but I, then I looked down and I saw the stagnant, the dark stagnant water that was awaiting me. And it was rising quite fast. It was coming towards me. I wasn't sure how deep it was, but something within me knew that I did not want to be in that murky water. And there was a chance to fall off of the scaffold if I tried to jump to the other side prematurely. I thought to myself, am I supposed to anticipate the impending evil or anticipate the impending good on the other side and act or stay in place to wait for God to act on my behalf. Somehow I knew there was a choice. I knew deep down inside that I needed to wait. And if I was premature in my decision, it could be detrimental. And then the water level was coming up higher. I was told to put the sole of my feet on top of the water to walk across the chasm to pass over the water to get to the other side. It was like a step in faith. And when I did, this, the scene, change, it, it changes. It changes to another room, uh, and it was a green and yellow room with a high window. That, and it seemed that someone was looking into that high window. And pr- a, a prophetic metaphor for looking into is actually looking into a vision. So I knew that there was a vision that was about ready to happen, uh, that I was somehow set up to, to, to wait for a vision that would come my way. Okay, so someone was looking into uh, that was looking from the other side, could have been from heaven, to find to sh- to make to uh, to look for me uh, to show up. And I think that's what the Holy Spirit does; He looks for us to show up. 
so we can so he can impart to us a vision. However, you know we have to position ourselves to do, you know whatever it is that we we're called to do at that moment. So after I saw the woman, I, what, or what looked like a woman, or the face of what looked like a woman, I saw the profile of. Uh, I saw this woman's face through her profile, uh, who kept appearing and disappearing. And then, she, when, then she, when she saw me, she left. She. It was like there was a mission and vision for waiting for me to show up. Okay, so when I showed up, some another person came to the window to make an announcement. Another woman, or maybe an angelic being. And this is what ha- this is what the woman the other one the other woman said. I have been given something. She's and she was saying to me, "You have been given something that you've been holding on to for a while, and uh, someone's going after you to try to take it away from you." And so then the angel told further told me that I am in a safe place. So wait and do not anticipate a move from the enemy. The enemy will not act on your will not steal from you but in this place of waiting do not act prematurely expect something greater from God expect to see what God is going to do on your behalf alright for the next season for the future I felt deep within my spirit that time was running short but to rest securely in, in God in that room and wait for him to act I was wondering why I was not at that level of the window and why the high ceiling at the same time. Uh, and the place was it felt like I was in a basement, which is a play on words, a basement, um, a place of lowness, low, lowliness, a place of humility. Um, so God wants to do that with his people, to bring them to a place of humility uh, to wait, on him so that he can uh, impart the mysteries of the kingdom for 2016. So if you find yourself in this place, it's a good place to be.
the fire in my soul, be the fire in my heart, Okay, everybody, we're back. Wasn't that a great song that we just played? Well, anyways, we're here. Uh, and guess who walked into the studio? Bridge and Timothy O'Leary. Welcome, 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 welcome. So, so awesome to have live people actually in the studio while I'm doing a show. Um, again, this is WCI, WSCIRO. Christian Internet Radio Outreach of Greater Boston, and we're um, doing Faith Talks Live Prayer uh, for the Facebook audience as well as YouTube and Vimeo. We love you guys. We're so glad you're able to come. Um, and uh, again, for those who just tuned in, we're, uh, this is all about Prophetic Word 2016 um, regarding transition and intention. But we have two wonderful people here that God has called into ministry, and um, I've, I had the luxury of introducing them to one another last Sunday when my friend Breach, who's from Ireland, you, you listened to her and her broadcast on the prodigal, you know, return of the prodigal. I think it was 2011. It was 2011. That's about six years ago. Well, she's back, and she's going to talk to us about um, uh, Treasures of the Doctors, her new ministry. Uh, and actually, it's something that the Lord's been building up within her, within the spirit of her life. And it's been, you know, sitting on the back burner, aging like fine wine, okay, waiting for a new wine skin. <laughs> and so Bree is here to tell you all about what's going to take place in March, uh, March 16th and um, this, and Wednesday. this Wednesday. Okay, and then, but, but I guess, Tim, would you like to... Um, Interview or sure. sure. Okay. All so right. All right. well, uh, thank you, Doctor Kenneth, and you can call me just Tim. You don't have to formally introduce. When I hear my whole name, mm-hmm. it's usually because I'm in trouble. <laughs> Timothy, Timothy O'Leary, and you don't know my middle name, and I'm not going to. Or you do, but we're not going to use it because if I got the middle in in the first, the middle and the last, I was really in are trouble. You, are you are <laughs> so. you afraid that you're going to sound like the Pope, Pope Francis? Oh. Wow, oh, you oh just God. let it just <laughs> let it out over the air. All right, all right. Well, Shirley, you were right. Thank you so much for bringing 
me down to meet uh, your friend and now my new friend. Although I think we actually knew each other from years ago at Father Tom's. Yeah, that's right. We all, everybody had gone through yeah. Father Tom DiLorenzo's yeah. ministry. Bless Father God bless Tom. him. The boot camp. Good, Father Tom. The boot camp. Yes. Good man of God he is. Father faithful, Tom. faithful yeah. soldier. Uh, but this is an exciting thing because you have come back into our lives again uh, because the Lord has put something really exciting on your heart and something that he is calling you to do and you're stepping out in faith and making it happen Mm -hmm. and the name that you have been inspired to give to your new woman's ministry is a fascinating name Treasures Out of the Darkness Treasures Out of the Darkness so first of all Breach where did that where did that come from that came forth out of prayer. I was praying one day, and uh, I was brought back in my mind to Northern Ireland, where I grew up. Mm. And we used to play a game there called TIG. What is it? TIG. T-I-G. TIG? Okay. okay. Yes. What is TIG? TIG was a game where you would have a group of children... And one child would be chosen to be the tigger. And they would run after the other children, touch them, and then that child would be stuck. Oh, wherever they caught them? Wherever the tigger touched you, you were like stuck. You were like paralyzed. Ah. However, one of the other little children could come and set you free. Wow. So it was during this time of prayer, Tim, that the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and he said, it's the same as us Christians. Hmm. The tigger, the enemy of our soul, that we know as Satan. Wow. In the body of Christ, other little children, that... We have the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, to set free through the power and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. So after that time of prayer, he showed me how it is the the natural and the spiritual as how we as Christians, can can unbind through the blood of Jesus. It's Jesus in us, it's not us. Mm -hmm. And um, he said that uh, he called me into writing a book. Mm -hmm. And it took 15 years, roughly, for this book to um, materialize. And... Now I have been released by the Holy Spirit to share what he has put in my heart and where he's taken me from to where I am today. And that's it. It's um, Together in God is the name of the game, TIG. But now the Holy Spirit showed me it's Together in God. Mm. is our true freedom and oneness and wholeness. Mm. Like it says in John 17, we're called to be one and whole in our Lord Jesus Christ. That was the eternal uh, high priest prayer of Jesus Mm. in John 17. So that's Treasures in the Darkness. um, It's a woman's ministry. Not only a woman's ministry, it's just a slither of the pie. Mm. And uh, Isaiah 45, verse 3, mm. is uh, where the name actually came from. In um, we uh, read that, that in Isaiah 45, 3, that out of the darkness, God has hidden for us. Let me read it for you. Yes, please do. Isaiah 45, verse 3, and this is the King James Mm -hmm. Version. I will give you treasures out of the darkness, riches stored in secret places, Mm -hmm. so that you may know that I am 
the Lord God of Israel. Wow. Who summoned you by name. Wow. So that's what this ministry is. We have to go into the darkness to realize who we are and who we're not. Mm. So this ministry is... um, not just women, this is, as I said before, a slither of the pie mm. um, about calling people out of the tomb, of the darkness of our lives, to into the light of Jesus Christ in our true identity in Him as our God, as our Saviour, as our friend, as our... Lover. All lover. Mm -hmm. Lover. Mm -hmm. uh, As our all in all. Our portion. Our cup. Our source. Our fortress. Our God in whom we can trust. Mm, Wow. Well, that is really inspiring, and I think it's also very timely. So um, you were pointing out that this is a sliver of the pie, so at some point in the future, this, this may grow to include men or something targeted toward men but at least at the initial stage you're you're aiming toward women right now women right now and um there's another slither of the pie is that handmaidens and servants of our high priest Jesus Christ hmm. handmaidens and servants so that would be both women and men yes hmm. women and men and um I'm really into the five offices of the church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I've got a heart for the priesthood of the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been called um, for the past 25 years um, through revelation from the Holy Spirit, from the throne of God. And I've written, 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 written for about 25 years now. Mm-hmm. And it's time to release that into the light mm. of God, into the body of Christ, what I was shown and taught in the darkness. Mm. Wow. Now, you mentioned you have a, a heart for the five uh, positions and, and you have a heart for the priesthood of the Catholic Church. Yes. But you, this treasures out of the darkness, is this something that's only for Catholic or is this for anybody who... Not at all. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. In John fifteen sixteen, our Lord Jesus said, I, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. Mm-hmm. So that's to all. Well, that's wonderful that it's open to all. Is there another reason that you have it open to all? The woman at the well we read in John four twenty one sorry twenty three I believe the Father is seeking worshippers in spirit and truth. Mm. The woman at the well before she met Jesus she was bound. What was she bound to? A religious spirit. As we read in John four the woman kept bringing up about her forefathers and about a religion, a religious attitude. And not until Jesus spoke to her the truth, saying, the Father seeks worshippers in spirit and truth. Now, who is this spirit and truth? It is God the Father is seeking worshippers in spirit and truth in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ and the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ through the oneness and the Holy Spirit. So you were um, saying, uh, I'm looking at the um, card, and of course if this was video you could look at it. It's a very professionally done card. Uh, Treasures Out of the Darkness. Again, it's a really very inspiring name. It really is. And then just as you were saying, you are invited to come and join us as we gather together to worship our Father in spirit and truth. 
And it's going to be meeting on the 16th of every month. Um, and we're going to give the location. We'll talk about the location in a few moments. But for now, it's Hotel 1620, formerly the Radisson Hotel in Plymouth, Massachusetts. It's from 7. Uh, and I like how you have on your 7 Sharp. Okay, may I yes. say? I appreciate that. All right? I appreciate that. 7 Sharp. 7 Sharp, Tim, because um, in prayer, um, first of all, this is the Lord's. It's not mine. I'm just uh, a voice. I'm a voice in the wilderness calling for people to prepare the way of our Lord Jesus Christ because he is coming back, Tim. He is coming back, and he's coming back for us, each and every one of us. Um, Just a note in John 3.16 was the scripture that I opened up to one day in prayer. And then the Lord led me to Luke 3.16. The first John, we all know it, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that we, whomever believes, will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Amen, Dr. Shirley. And... uh, then, after that scripture, he led me to Luke 3.16, funny, isn't it, that uh, says that uh, the Holy Spirit will come and baptize us with fire and power, mm. okay? And then when I realized the Lord led me to uh, book the hotel for March, which is the third month, 16. Wow. 16. At 1620 wow. and the year 16. So it's all. Hmm. It all. 16, 16. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. That's divine. Yes. Yeah. Like, you yes. switch it around at 1620. Wow. That's right. Wow. So this is, uh, this is uh, God's work. And I'm sorry, and Tim, so far, I forgot your that's, question. That's all right. That's all right. We're going to get back to it. All right. We'll get back. It was, that's beautiful. Everything you shared was awesome. But I did like the fact that you had down here from the time to seven to nine. And what I'd like to do is just for the sake of the women, we'll just talk about what you envision those two hours being like so people can get an idea of what they're going to experience. But I love how you put down seven sharp. I mean, you know what? That is great. Okay, Tim. Um, being a, o'clock, being a man, o'clock. yes, being a man, you would appreciate that, wouldn't you? I would. You? I would. So does my husband. Oh, right. <laughs> so this is what happened. I was in prayer. Everything I, I, everything steeped in prayer, as you know, Doctor Shirley. We women of the Lord steep everything in prayer. Amen. No other way. No other way. There's only one way, and his name is Jesus. Jesus. Amen, the sister. Way. The way, the truth, the and the life. So um, I was in prayer one day, and uh, I heard the Lord uh, begging me to come close. And what I saw in the Spirit was Noah's Ark. And I saw the door of the ark closing. And everyone within the ark turned their face toward heaven and looked up to the mountain from whence our help comes from. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, Seven o'clock, doors will be closed for ministry to start. Mm. And I thought, well, what if someone from out of state is coming and they arrive at five past seven? They won't be allowed in, child. Wow. And I asked the Lord, can you please give me a scripture for this? Because this sounds very... Abrupt, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is what the scripture he brought me to was about the ten virgins. 
This ministry treasures out of the darkness. God's hand is upon it to prepare us, the church, to get rid of the falsehood and all double-mindedness and double talk and that it's all about Jesus. This ministry is all about God. It's like with the real Jesus, please stand up. That's what this ministry is about. We seek him in spirit and truth. And that's it, Tim. Um, I believe that as we get back to our first love and turn our face toward heaven, he shall send forth his spirit and reverence for God. Instead of us taking God off his throne and putting them here where we are and raising ourselves up and setting ourselves up on the throne of our hearts mm. um, where God is supposed to be. So this is all preparation for what's coming down the pike, so to speak. Yeah. And we'll know what's what and who's who. And it's all about Jesus. Well, that's um, a very deep and profound explanation as to why you have down there 7 o'clock sharp. And you're right, uh, your husband and I uh, probably would agree that we, we like that. We like when people take things seriously. Uh, we're here to do ministry. 7 o'clock means 7 o'clock, not 7.25, 7 o'clock. So that's I, I just admire that. And so now uh, a, a woman uh, comes in, and she's got a desire to worship. And mm. so what? how do you envision the prayer meeting going? Well, we start out with everything that we do in worship of the Lord. And uh, how I like to do it and how I've been trained, I believe, by the Holy Spirit, a new song in our hearts, a, one of praise and thanksgiving to our God who loves us so much. So for the first, I would say, it's going to be roughly about two hours. And for the first, I would say 45 minutes. It's going to be intense praise and worship. Mm. And we are so blessed because a worship leader, uh, Heather Ann Coe, is going to be joining us and leading us in worship. Wow. And that in itself is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, it's such a blessing that uh, Heather Ann would um, come and do this for us because um, she has her own ministry and everything. But again, her heart mm -hmm. as a worshipper is to worship God and be open to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. So um, we're going to worship for 45 minutes roughly. And uh, then I'll be teaching uh, for about 15 minutes for um, from the book, the writings, the uh, personal revelation mm -hmm. that God has uh, downloaded into me. I'm going to share with the ladies. And then um, we're open for prayer and intercession for our, our nation mm -hmm. and the nation of Israel. Yes. And the church is a body, and um, then if anyone uh, wants personal prayer, there will be p a prayer, personal prayer. And then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we will be, um, if anyone wants to uh, call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and give their hearts to Jesus, Mm -hmm. um, they'll have uh, a time to do that. And then dismissal, so roughly about two hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we'll be holding the schedule to. Well, you know what? I have to say, that, that sounds absolutely powerful. Um, and unfortunately, you know what I look like. So, like, if I showed up with a wig and tried to sneak <laughs> in, I mean, it's Can not, not going to work. Are you looking for Thank the you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. men are welcome. Mm -hmm. Men are welcome. 
as I said before, all are welcome. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, we started, you mentioned earlier that uh, this is, the opening day is 316. Yes. And how profound that is because yes. it ties in with the scriptures. However, this program may be airing past the opening date of March 16th. Mm -hmm. So this is not just a one-off. The opening date is 316. Yes. But your plan is to go forward on the 16th of every month. Is that yes. right? Yes, that's okay. right, Tim. Now, tell, tell us why it's at, um, I find it fascinating. It's in Plymouth, okay? And, of course, we should, if anybody actually attended their history class and remembers from history, that's where the pilgrims landed, right? I it's mentioned some... something about 1620 at the beginning of the show. So it's it's amazing how this is all collaborating. Oh, wow. Isn't that something? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. It's the Holy yeah. Spirit. Well, the, the hotel is formerly a Radisson. Now it's Hotel 1620 in mm -hmm. Plymouth, okay? Mm -hmm. And what is, I, I know that I'm, you're not a spokesman for the company, but why do you think they picked 1620 for a hotel in Plymouth? I honestly don't know why they picked it, but I believe I have an inkling why the Holy Spirit picked it. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, in prayer, uh, the Holy Spirit led me to go. To, at that time, it was uh, the Radisson, and to pray that God's blessing mm -hmm. be upon this place, because it's a special place that God was going to use in the near future because of 1620, what happened. Mm -hmm. That's when the pilgrims landed. Exactly, In Tim. Plymouth Rock. And Plymouth Rock. Yeah, yeah. And me being a Were they driving at Plymouth? <laughs> no, that's terrible. Sorry. They were rocking. They were rocking. Oh, that's as bad. All right, I thought I was bad. That's as bad. Okay, sorry. Walk -a -walk -a. Sorry. It's a good thing we don't have a live audience. There'd be some ripe tomatoes being thrown right now. Well, we're okay. in our living room, so, so you know. <laughs> All right, so 1620, the pilgrims landed in Plymouth, and this yes. is now the name of the hotel, and the Holy yes. Spirit directed to you to this place even before it became known as 1620. Yes, about a year before, mm -hmm. a year before. And uh, what happened, because all begin, and there's a beginning and there's an ending. Mm. And we know our Lord Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega. Mm -hmm. Omega. He it knows the beginning from the end. Mm -hmm. And he also is the author and finisher of our faith, Tim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a very anointed uh, prayer meeting, it yeah. seems like. And how amazing. It's, it's good. I noticed that you uh, added how uh, you would like to be able to have intercession for our nation. Yeah. And you know what? Our nation needs prayer. Yes. We are not in a particularly great place right now, and it doesn't matter what side of the economic, political, race, culture, mm -hmm. class spectrum mm -hmm. you're in. I think everybody can agree our nation needs prayer. Yes. And how amazing in a hotel named 1620 when these pilgrims came. And, mm -hmm. and let's not forget mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they came all the way over. I mean, it, You know what? We complain. We get in our car. We get stuck in rush hour traffic, and we, oh, it was awful. You know, I had to pull off and go to Dunkin' Donuts. You know what? These people got on a boat mm, and crossed right. the ocean. Right. They didn't have running water back right. then. Right. They came to a land they didn't know because they wanted the freedom to worship, worship. Christ. And I mean, you know what? Yeah. This is the metal. The yeah. people were that settled our nation. Mm -hmm. So it's. A, I find it to be very spiritually rich that you're picking what mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit picked, yeah. Hotel 1620 in Plymouth, yeah. to include prayer for our nation. Yeah. I think it's an absolutely yeah. anointed uh, experience. Okay, so let's just do a little housekeeping. So the we did mention March 16th. That's because the opening day was 316, or will be, because we're doing this before March 16th, mm -hmm. but this program may air after March 16th, so it's the 16th of every month yes. at Hotel 1620 in Plymouth, Massachusetts. And for more information, so we have here, um, we have an email address that we could uh, give out to the people, so anybody's interested, they could send you an email. What is that email address? It's, uh, well, yeah, you know what, if this was camera here, this was a beautiful toss 
to the host, okay, or to the guest. I toss to her on a silver platter, and she looks at me and shrugs. What do you mean? You're shrugging your shoulders. Oh, darling, you're setting this up. You're going to be flooded with emails now, okay? All right, everybody, get their pen out. It's the name of the ministry, Treasures Out of the Darkness at gmail.com treasures out of the darkness at gmail.com and I'm going to suggest that you write that down you can remember it it's real easy to remember treasures out of the darkness at gmail g-m-a-i-l gmail.com and that's how you can get in touch with Breach and you can send an email and from that you can get all the information particularly about um, you know the actual street address Mm -hmm of the hotel and you can put it into GPS because uh, you know what I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the scripture just coming to my mind right now and honestly I, I do not recall the citation where it is but what just came to my mind is the uh, the word of the Lord to do not despise small beginnings. Amen. And so Amen. I'm just saying, you know, you're going to start out with there just may be a handful of people, Amen. but don't despise small beginnings mm. because this thing will grow. Mm. It will be anointed and will grow. Yeah. All right. Well, excellent. So we have Breege uh, Carroll is your last name, correct? Breege yes. Carroll. Yes. All right. And this is going to be a wonderful Treasures Out of the Darkness ministry. It's going to be meeting on the 16th of every month at Hotel 1620 formerly the Radisson in Plymouth, Massachusetts uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. And for information, you can send an email to treasuresoutofthedarkness at gmail.com. God bless you, Breach. And you know, I just have to say, I have to say God blessing to Shirley, Dr. Shirley Kenneth, because you know what? It takes a lot of um, character for a person who has a show to hand over the reins of a show to to a guest host which she did for me and that takes that's a special character who can do that it takes a unique form of humility to step off the stage and let someone else get up and so god bless you shirley and now we'll give it back to you god bless you shirley god bless you tim o'leary and um reach care of um god just i i just get so um awe struck as to especially knowing each one of you um for a long time like 20 years and seen how God molded you and brought you through your um, your own darkness and um also into his school of the um desert you know <laughs> and to just bring um purified gold out of you and i i just i love, that just that just lets me know that there is a god you know and he works like that in all of us and it's just amazing um, to see this work in progress, you know. And surely, so, I would suggest as the, as the host yeah. uh, or the hostess of the program, um, it sort of makes you kind of like the man of the house here. I'm the woman and of the house. You're the yeah. woman. Uh, of the hey, house. I'm not a man. I don't know how to be a man. <laughs> you're the you're the <laughs> spiritual head here because yeah. this is your program. Mm. So I would suggest that you, uh, when you go to rap, you rap with the prayer. Yeah. Uh, over this ministry. Well, I'm going to do that, time. yeah. So, but beforehand, I just wanted, you know, Tim's been so gracious, but I want to be able to, um, you know, let everyone know that God has called you, Tim, um, out of your darkness into his marvelous light, not just, you know, personal salvation, but into a ministry. Um uh, and if you can just give two or three sentences of that, and we'll include you in all the in this prayer that God will take. You know, will will, will really. This is a, 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 a this is a when you be in here on the show, it is like the, a pivotal point for your life. It's a turning point because you stepped out in faith in your struggles to be here, and you know what they are, and God knows what they are, and it, this is a divine appointment for you, and um, so. So if you can just share briefly about you know in a few words what you know why you're here and it's 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 correlating to what you know why God called Breach here because Breach all along has been saying that the Lord's called her to raise up leaders to get into the ministry that God's called him to out of their darkness. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shirley. That's very mm-hmm. kind of you. Um, I'll be very brief. Uh, mm-hmm. It's. Uh, Several years ago, I derived from a Roman Catholic background. I was born and raised that way, Mm -hmm. and that is how I was introduced to 
the um, reality of there being a God was through my family. Mm -hmm. and um, But I went through a number of different experiences where I was called out of that world. Mm -hmm. oh, I call it that world. That's how I refer to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one point earlier in my walk, uh, by divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I was sent into the world of evangelical Christianity, and I followed it. Uh, it was not an easy thing to do. It caused a bit of a scandal mm -hmm. uh, in my family uh, and in my neighborhood. Uh, certainly was difficult for my uh, mother, who was a Eucharistic minister and also a um, worked in the bereavement ministry in her parish. Uh, you know, oh, what's happening with Gabe's son? And you, know, you, you would think I had, you know, you know, joined the Communist Party and went over to Russia or something, you know. But, uh, but I still followed faithfully what I was told by the Holy Spirit to do, and it was not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it was very rewarding. And so, what God was doing later, He gave me the name for it. It's called Kingdom One. Mm -hmm. Kingdom One. And what the Father was impressing upon me in Kingdom One is that we, as human beings, are all kind of very kind of uh, parochial, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that, you know, well, I'm a Baptist, and, you know, I don't trust those Methodists, and I'm a Methodist, and I don't like those Catholics, and uh, and I'm a Catholic, and I, I'm not too sure about those, evangel those evangelicals or mm -hmm. Anglicans or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the body of Christ and the family of God is fractured, and this is in direct opposition to the very express will of Jesus and the Father. Mm -hmm. When Jesus prayed that, you be, that we will be one mm -hmm. as you and I are one. So Kingdom One is what he was showing me was uh, his vision and plan for trying to bring some um, unity into the body. And um, I've seen it come out. I've only seen a few examples of its working out. He's shown me some of the things I myself am more like in the uh, kind of like the guy who's, you know, inventing a computer and it's all in pieces down in the basement and it hasn't come together mm -hmm. is nowhere near as advanced as uh, our sister Breeze's Treasures Out of the Darkness is and I'm so happy to see this but that time will come part of that difficulty is that there are still some bindings that are, remain on me mm -hmm. that need to be removed before I can be f more fully useful in the kingdom and I'm doing what I can and it's an honor to participate in things like this tonight that we're doing and I and whenever the Lord gives me a job I love to do the work of, of God there's nothing more satisfying than to know you're doing God's work and I love mm -hmm. to do it and I like to and I take those jobs seriously when mm -hmm. I'm given them mm -hmm. So uh, that's all training for something bigger. So Kingdom One is going to be something that's going to be coming down the line because it's fractured. Our body is fractured. Also, I do want to share that this is one of the major reasons why we have not had a revival in our land. God showed me this a, a while ago. There's many, 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 many people who have faithfully and for years been praying and crying out weeping and fasting and crying before the throne for a revival which is desperately needed in our nation in fact i think it's our our only hope is to have a revival and it hasn't happened yet and it's frustrating well there's a number of reasons why part of it is god's timing but there's another reason that i believe is at play here and this is what god showed me that he the outpouring of the holy spirit that is sort of being prepared to come to be released from heaven mm -hmm. is of such a degree that it is unlike anything that has been seen since the beginning of the church mm -hmm. we're going to see an outpouring we're going to see biblical occurrences on the level of when Christ first came. Yes. All right, we're a living, we are a generation that's unlike any other generation in 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. It's a great honor to be alive at this time. Mm -hmm. It's also going to be difficult. It's time to buckle your seatbelt and hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to be pretty amazing. And mm -hmm. so because of the outpouring, the potential for this outpouring is so great, what the Father showed me is an illustration of potted plants. Okay, so just imagine potted plants and uh, mm -hmm. they're all separated so there's one and then six inches over there's another one and six inches over there's another one six inches in front of each of the three is three more so you have a whole set of potted plants but they're all standing alone they're not mm -hmm. connected to each other and then you I saw water like being thrown from a bucket which represents the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so if you threw water over those potted plants 
some of the water is going to get into the plants, but most of it's going to fall between the cracks, wow. okay? Mm -hmm. And then I saw them all put together. Now, what was interesting was they all remained individual. Mm -hmm. They were all separate. They were all individual potted plants, but they were all together. Mm -hmm. So they were bunched together. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the water throw, and all the water went in. Only a little bit trickled out. And so what the Father, I believe by seeing that vision, what the Father was showing me is they're going to hold off on sending the Holy Spirit revival when everybody is separated. Mm -hmm. Because right. what's going to happen? It's going to be a bunch of Baptists yeah. in Alabama who are going to be on fire right. and the Catholics in Massachusetts. We just talked about that at the beginning of the show. Yeah. It's going to be, the body has got to come together. Wow. When the body comes together, mm -hmm. then the outpouring will come. So that relates to Kingdom One. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to share that. That's what's in the works. I'm being developed for it. It is not ready for prime time yet. Mm -mm. But with the grace of God, that day will come. Well, I think I see a show called Kingdom One um, on our channel, and this is going to be good. Um, okay. So, so um, that is. Thank you. That is wonderful. I, 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 I this is the clear issue I've ever been with um, what God calls you to. So that's that's really good. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing that. And you know, when you were talking about um, about your vision and the ministry God's called you to, I, I started seeing the word bore, boredom. Not on you, no. But what I did see when you were talking about the people of God, where we are, and, and the visions, and, and, and things like that, it brought, it brought me to a point, where, uh, a, a time, a couple of days ago when I was praying, and I'm, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, what are you doing, you know, in the heart of your people to, um, you know, as people are like struggling in their sins and, and things like that? And he said, he's saying that we just need to pray. There's a lot of people, he said the whole nation right now, the whole, the whole world has PTSD. But, you know, in what everybody's responded to with these elections in this nation is uh, they're making decisions out of their PTSD. And and so, but it's based on stuff, you know, mindsets from the past and, you know, just their norm, what they known that always known how to react to this and that and the other thing. And then the Lord was showing me, but I am going to move in such a way, like with the laws, you know, with the laws that are not um, of God that have been passed on the books and, and even though they're permitted, it's not God's will. What he's going to do, even with the abortion, is that even though these are these laws are on the book, he's going to go into the heart of man, man, and and rewrite his rewrite take out man's laws in the um, the stony hearts and in the heart of flesh. He's going to write his laws, and they're going to be so bored with the old way of doing things that he's going to allow a spirit of boredom to take place, and it's going to actually be the thing that turns to happen. They're going to be sick and tired of doing the status quo. They're going to be sick and tired. It's not even going to be what laws, you know, it's not going to be what this one said or that one said. It's going to be a collective. Every People are just going to, one by one, going to get bored with the status quo, and they're going to see, expect to see, they're going to see the workings of the kingdom very clearly in their midst that, and they're going to hear his voice, and it's it's going to be the things that tools from heaven that are going to change, tools and gifts from heaven that are going to change their perspective, and they're going to desire more desire more of what the Lord is offering from heaven instead of what man has offered on the earth. Wow! Amen. Speaking of hearing from the Lord, did you did you uh, get a word from the Lord? Yes, okay. I did. I would like to. Okay. I would like to share it. And I think with that, after that, we're going to offer, do, do communion, and Tim could um, uh, do you know begin you know can offer mm. the communion for uh, all the listening audience, um, and uh, and then we will um, end with a prayer. Beautiful. Okay. I'm hearing a little song going through my head. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of it. I received it one night, oh, about 20 years ago while at Father Tom De Lorenzo's. Last night. So it's last night, 20 years ago. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm reminded of it tonight um, as I was listening to my new friend and brother, Tim, and uh, a Sam also. So we'll start with the little song, Excuse My Voice. <laughs> 
God bless you. <laughs> unity, unity. Unity is what I ask of thee. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the captive will be set free. Unity, unity is what I ask from thee. Mm. Psalm 133 How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Mm. It is like precious oil poured out on the head running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the colour of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Breesh. Okay. That was really awesome. So we're entered at a time uh, of communion, and um, Tim is going to uh, give us the honor of presenting uh, communion on your behalf, and then in solidarity with the communion of heaven. Amen. All right. Well, you know, we we always recommend, uh, you know, people when they're together, that they can do this. So they can reenact the Lord's Supper. And that's what we do when we have communion. So Shirley has these wonderful little containers that have a, a, a host or a piece of bread Host is a Catholic word, mm -hmm. and um, grape juice. Mm -hmm. but now, for those who are Catholic, um, this is not the Eucharist. It's a symbol. It's a symbol. It's a symbol. But um, as a Catholic, if we were to take this, we'd just look at it as a spiritual communion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, you know, that's true. That's a good clarification because this is not, uh, by proper definition, this is not a sacrament as defined in the Catholic Church. Yeah, that's right. But all believers are welcome to participate in yes. re being part of the Lord's Supper because he asked us to do it in remembrance of him. And one of the things that I really loved about um, Jesus in this experience is that, you know, this is the night before he was betrayed. He knew he knew this was his night. Mm -hmm. He had uh, had uh, praying. Uh, he would later pray in Gethsemane. He would in, be in agony. But one of the things Scripture says is that he wanted to spend the Passover dinner with his friends. Mm. And that's just so beautiful because that's the way Jesus is with us. He yeah. wants to spend time with us and he wants to be part of our lives yeah. for real. You know, not just imaginary or not just uh, limited solely to being in a formal church building, but to be part of our lives and the grittiness of life. And I really love that. He knew yeah. what was coming. That's so human. That's so loving. You want to be with his friends yes. and have this dinner, this Passover yes, meal, Lord. which means so much. And there's so much symbolism in the Passover meal itself. That's a whole nother. Talk about another program. Oh, yeah, yeah. How the Passover meal is a presaging of everything that the Lamb did, mm -hmm. that Jesus did. But he, he was with his brothers, and he took the bread, the Passover bread, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to each of his brothers and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Wow, and they recognized him in the breaking of the bread, too. Amen. So we'll take and eat as we remember our Lord. Mm-hmm.
And then after, he told her in the Catholic liturgy, I like how it's worded in the Catholic liturgy, it says, uh, in a similar way, mm -hmm. he took the chalice and it was filled with the wine and he said to his brothers, take and drink, this is the chalice of my blood. And it is the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. It is the shedding of the blood of the Lamb that brought the forgiveness of sins and eternal mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. This is the blood of the new and eternal covenant. So no longer would be salvation be through following the Jewish law. Mm -hmm. Salvation will be through Jesus. Mm -hmm. The new and eternal covenant. Mm -hmm. The blood shed for the forgiveness of sins Amen. and for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Take and drink. Mm. Amen. Amen. So let's end with an Our Father calling down the you know the bread from heaven, the kingdom of God, and, and uh, but I just wanted to thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here today and your people and amongst us, Lord. we I just ask that your Holy Spirit, you send your Holy Spirit to those who are listening. Touch them in the heart, mind, body, soul, spirit, will and emotion. Minister them and heal them. Lord, heal your beloved in their sleep. We thank you for the rest that you are wanting to give them from heaven. Lord, that they would come into the complete healing that you have willed for them since before the foundation of the earth. And we just thank you, Jesus. Lord, may the deaf hear and may the blind see, may the lame walk, and may those who are dead be called back to life. In Jesus' holy name. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And as we were praying that, I just saw gold, pure gold, liquid gold coming from heaven and coming upon everybody. And I, I see it's like shimmering gold. And, and uh, the Lord's remaking, remolding many, many people. They're not even going to know what they're going to look, what they look like at the end of 2016. So we thank you, Lord, for the purifying fires of the yes, Holy Spirit coming upon yes, you, the people of God yes. in the form of a liquid gold. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Bree, did you see anything? Um, just when you were sharing mm -hmm. that vision, one Peter. Mm -hmm. One five, six or seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've been purified. We've been tested. Mm -hmm. But my brother, my sister, and the Lord Jesus Christ, no. This is for a time. This is for a time. Mm -hmm. And we're entering into a new season. Mm -hmm. The church is entering into a new season. Mm -hmm where we're being asked to take the limits off of God that we have placed upon him. Mm -hmm. Do you receive that today? Do you receive that today? If so, join with us right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift off the limits that we have placed upon you. That that you want to do in and through us, around us, for us. We repent, Father. We repent. And we ask tonight, dear God, that you remove all the stumbling blocks that we have placed in our own paths or others' paths to keep from your fullness, your goodness, your sovereignty over our lives. 
We thank you. We Mm -hmm. praise you. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for listening to this segment of um, Faith Talks Live Prayer on Blog Talk Radio. God bless you. We love you. Stay tuned for more. Treasures in the Darkness, a new woman's ministry. Come and enter into the Father's love. A chance to swim in the love of God. Treasures in the Darkness, meeting Wednesday, March 16th at Hotel 1620 in Plymouth, Massachusetts. For more information, contact Treasures Out of the Darkness at gmail.com. Come and experience the love of God. Seek the Lord, and you will find Him. This is Seek Christian Internet Radio Outreach, WSCIRO, Boston, Massachusetts.
Without end. 